Hello everyone. This is the first part of the story, Avatar in DC Universe. Chapter 1, Aiden Strong. Aiden's point of view. The thing with shock is that it leaves you mute, reaction-wise. You're hit with this intense focus on, nothing. Instead of your brain not computing, it computes everything till the end result is nothing. My name is Aiden Strong and I am not crazy. My name is Aiden Strong and I am not crazy. My name is Aiden Strong and I. Duck. A body tackled me out of the way of an attack that left the wooden crates behind me a mess of wrecked goods. Is that a cabbage? Who puts a cabbage? The cabbage was stepped on by a scaly foot and a packet with a white substance spilled out. Cocaine. Oh. I felt something roughly pull me up and throw me behind it. Get out of here, you idiot. Run. The young boy who said that was dressed in a very familiar outfit, red, green, black and yellow. Robin? I muttered. Yes. I don't have the time to sign you an autograph and that will probably never happen if you get yourself killed. Full clarity finally hit me like an 18-wheeler. Oh God that's Killer Croc. I scrambled back in fear as the Batman ducked a hasty haymaker that broke through the concrete pillar of the warehouse we were in and in a swift action planted a device on Croc's chest. Batman then flipped over him. There was an explosion and Croc was launched off right into a kick on the small of the back from the dark night. I had the time to gawk at the expert display in gymnastics before going right back to panicking when. Gah. Stay still you little shit. A hail of bullets escaped the firearms of a few generic thugs hiding behind a black SUV. I counted four with three more unconscious right next to them. I crouched right behind an empty container and closed my ears. I had never heard gunshots before. What the fuck dot is happening? There was a loud snarl and growl and I saw Croc's body sail over my head to grasp at the rafters of the warehouse. Another loud sound was the clang on the container itself as Batman jumped off it and shot a line. A swing later and he followed Killer Croc outside the building. I scampered up and ran off towards the entrance to the building. And immediately shouted in fright when a bullet hit the ground right in front of me. My shirt was grabbed from behind and I flailed in fear before my back hit the container I had been hiding behind it before. You're seriously still here? You must have a death wish. There was a continuous spray of bullets that hit the container. Stop stop, you fools. Don't finish your mags before we get the boy wonder. The same guy with the gun who had talked earlier said. Stay here and don't move. I have a few suckers to educate on why guns in foolish hands is wrong. Robin told me with a small upturn on his lips. I nodded dumbly and he patted my shoulder before throwing a few birdarangs on the only source of light in the warehouse. The light bulb shattered and the whole building was plunged into darkness, the only source of light being the moon shining through the hole made by Killer Croc while escaping Batman. Smart guy. I glanced around trying to widen my eyes and see. Robin had disappeared and a few seconds later the sound of birdarangs cutting through the air, shouts of people cursing out and bodies hitting the ground and more gunshots ringing out was all I could hear. A few more bodies hit the ground until I saw a lone man running towards the entrance of the warehouse. I looked back and saw nothing but darkness. Logic dictates that you stay with the good guys, Aiden. Robin is terrifying but he's not going to hurt you like he did those men. Please don't. I ignored my own advice and found myself running desperately towards the entrance door, right before the guy in front of me fell down from a birdarang hitting his trouser on the side, and then digging into the concrete, effectively taking him down. What level of skill did it take for someone to do something like that? Nah nah I'm out. I increased my running speed much to the shouts of my savior. Wait. Don't. The penguin. I didn't listen and just ran, the road to my salvation was so near and then, I rushed through it to freedom. Only to step right in front of almost a dozen guns. Pointed. Straight. At. Me. My hands came up quicker than my brain could register. Don't shoot. Don't shoot. 
a guy stepped forward and stared at me. He was dressed in a fancy suit with a pistol in hand. You're not Bats or his little sidekick. Who the fuck are you? My ha, huh, name is Aiden Strong sir. And, and I don't know how I got here. I was watching a movie in my apartment and then the next thing I know, I'm in a warehouse dodging bullets and watching a showdown between Killer Croc and the frickin' Batman. There was a brief silence as he nodded, holstered the gun on his hip and lit up a cigarette. The smoke twisted in the air slowly, while he took in a slow but long drag. I believe you. A couple of tears escaped my eyes as the feeling of relief overwhelmed me. But I still can't let you go. Sorry kid, Penguin wants everything happening here to be hush-hush. Quicker than my eyes could see the gun was back in his hand and I didn't hear the blast but more like felt it. A cold feeling spread through my chest as I spared an incredulous look at the growing spot of red soaking my blue, Ghostbusters t-shirt in blood. Something warm rose up uncontrollably through my throat and I knelt as my vision got hazy. The last thing I saw wasn't my murderer, nor was it Robin or Batman. It was a pulsing white light, beating like a heart, everything having faded from my sight. I reached out with my hand, it was so beautiful. I wish I could hold it. Robin's point of view. Damn it. Batman is gonna kill me for this. Robin thought while fighting the last of the mooks so that he could go after the civilian that had appeared from nowhere during the fight with Killer Croc and the Penguin Gang. Something was going down, Robin's detective mind told him. Penguin wasn't one to work with high-profile villains like Killer Croc. A clown dressed in Superman colors and wearing a power armor would have been more discreet than Croc that's for sure. So whatever the smuggled goods were, they were enough for the Penguin to bring in muscle of Killer Croc's caliber. That's bad. Robin smashed a knee on the goon's face and followed it up with a sweep that brought the guy to the floor with a thud. A zip tie appeared in hand in a practiced motion and the guy was immobilized quickly. Then Robin was off. He arrived just as a shot rang out. Cursing, he jumped behind the few crates on the entrance and watched as the young man he'd been trying to save fell to his knees. Robin's eyes widened in horror. No. There he is boss. A voice shouted and was immediately followed by a storm of bullets that made Robin roll away. He was mad. At the situation, Bruce for insisting on chasing after Killer Croc, Penguin for being the cause of this entire thing, the dead boy who had probably just been a little older than him and most of all, he was mad at himself. Robin threw a few smoke pellets on the ground and during the confusion, a few birdarangs shot out of the obscured position. Unfortunately, the birdarangs were accurately shot out of the air and Robin settled on a terrifying conclusion that made him eliminate any lines of sights to his position. The only sniper who could shoot like that despite the smoke was Deadshot. Deadshot was under Penguin's payroll too. Damn it. Deadshot wasn't a C-lister like the the goons and the Penguin mob. Deadshot was deadly. Let's box him in. Bring out the grenade launcher. Our backup will make sure we get him this time. What? Grenade launcher? What about the goods in the warehouse? Of course. Robin almost smacked himself for his stupidity. Penguin would want to erase all evidence of his involvement. The smell of gunpowder filled the air and Robin started getting worried. He couldn't leave his hiding place because Deadshot would no doubt tag him. He needed a distraction. As if to answer his prayers, a whoosh of air exploded outside the warehouse. The gust cleared out the smoke and sent men flying away from its epicenter. Then the shout started. Guns began spitting out bullets as everything descended into chaos. Robin ran out of the building and barely avoided a huge piece of rock from smashing into him. He rolled away and escaped the flames licking his cape. His costume might have been highly resistant but he didn't want to bet on just how resistant. He flipped away, rebounded from the wall to jump on a street light then shot a hook line to the next building over. The line pulled on his body but the trajectory was thrown off when a huge gust of wind magnitudes bigger than the last one carried him away. His young body hit the wall and breath left his lungs. His eyes watched on in shock as the boy from before floated in the air. 
a bubble of air enclosed his body, with rings of water, stones, and fire surrounding the air bubble. Gone was the brown eyes, and in their place were glowing white orbs. Men were cowering behind overturned cars. Some were bleeding, one was smashed to pulp by a rock and two others were burnt beyond recognition. Robin realized offhandedly that those men were dead. Batman never killed, no matter who the villain was or what they'd done. He broke bones but never killed. Bile rose up and he vomited on the ground next to him. Anger marred the features on the now alive boy and when he raised his hand hell was unleashed. The Avatar had arrived in D.C. Chapter 2, The Justice League Aiden's Point of View I came to with a groan of pain. My throat felt parched and scratchy. I fluttered my eyes open and winced at the bright lights. Here you go. A soft voice said and a glass of water was added to my hand. I immediately brought it my mouth and took a mouthful of the precious natural liquid. Hey hey easy. The glass was only taken from my hands after I was done with it. Having fought valiantly and stubbornly without any pleading or begging. Let no one tell you otherwise. After I was done with the water, I looked at the other occupant in the room and gaped at just how beautiful she was. Ha! Huh. Hi! I lamely said. If this is how angels wake people up in heaven then thank God I was religious. The woman, was blonde, with black lipstick, a black costume and, wait. Black canary? I asked tentatively, my brain finally catching up. I was having some heavy suspicions on who she actually was. She nodded and rose up from the chair. I'm glad to see you're awake. Do you remember anything? My heart started hammering in my chest as I processed the implications of standing, well more like lying in front of a fictional character. Her question also triggered my most recent memories and I started breathing heavily. I was in a fictional world. I was in, crap, I was in D.C. Going by the looks of Canary in her voice, Robin's relatively young age and snarky attitude, I must be in Young Justice. A half-forgotten cartoon I'd watched out of boredom. All things considered it wasn't the worst of all DC universes so I was relatively safe. For now that is. Can I use the bathroom? I asked her and she nodded, helping me up. She then directed me to a door on the left side of the bed and I entered. Before I could close the door, she placed a hand on my shoulder and I turned to look at her in question. I'll be back with someone to do a checkup on you and make sure you're completely fine. I nodded. Not really opposed to the idea. Besides, how else would I get the answers to my questions if I didn't cooperate with them? Acting stubborn would only increase Batman's suspicions at me and from what I knew about the guy, that was one way to make your life harder. I patted myself down, I had a hole on my chest last I checked. A hole made by a bullet. One would think that being from the dangerous part of L.A., guns and such would be something that I was familiar with even from just a passing glance, but that couldn't be far from the truth. I had friends who had friends who were involved in crime but most folks were just trying to live their lives normally. A word that I couldn't use so casually anymore. In fact, how did I even get here? I remember my whole life, so the chances of a ROB messing with my memories and personality was minimal. I was also in my original body. Dark skin, brown eyes, messy hair in a taper fade, five feet eight and a slim build from long hours playing basketball. What's next for me I wonder? I splashed a few cups worth of water on my face and swallowed the sudden lump that appeared in my throat. I wouldn't cry. Like Dad always says, make the best out of every situation. I knew it wouldn't and couldn't be easy, but you know what? It is what it is and crying like a little bitch wouldn't solve anything. As if to reward me for reaffirming my will, a piece of folded paper suddenly appeared in a flash and lazily drifted to my open palm. I unfolded it and read. Congratulations. Due to your universe achieving 500 universal cycles and planet, Earth, reaching a milestone by producing over a quadrillion number of sentient creatures, one lucky schmuck has been chosen for a never-before-seen chance. A. Multiversal Ambassador. You, in case you haven't figured it out yet, are that lucky schmuck. 
interact with the people of this universe and stand a chance to win blah blah. And if you win blah blah, then you get to be a blah blah. Get it? All this is geared to help you. A system was tailor-made for you that was judged to be just, right for this world. Do not fret however if you feel like it's limiting, achieve different milestones and power will follow you soon after. Excelsior. Young Aiden and like your name, be strong. P.S. You'll probably never hear from us again, we have a shit load of work to do but luckily the system is fully automated and draws the energy to keep itself running from what the humans of this world call, the bleed. The program is very very advanced, no one and nothing will notice it. P.P.S. Although the potential for your growth is limitless, do note that the system will not stray from its core functions. No crafting if the system is meant for fighting. P.P.P.S. No one will be watching so don't get yourself killed too soon before you reach blah blah, kid. P.P.P.P.S. This is the final one I promise. Your chosen system is, the Avatar system. Not only that but also for reaching the milestone, out, of, depth, and into, a, whole, other, universe, you get. Adaptable body. Look at the system interface to learn more. I finished reading the whole piece of paper and sat on the toilet seat numbly. The paper burst into flames and I jumped a little before sitting down again and hugging myself. I gently started giggling. Out of the quadrillion people who have supposedly existed over the course of 500 universal cycles, I get chosen. Me? I mean, what qualifications did they even use? The guy with nappiest hairstyle of all time? All I can say is I didn't use to look this good forever. The door to the hospital room I was in opened and I knew it was my cue to leave the bathroom. So you know what, I'm not going to care about any of that stuff. As long as these beings didn't affect my life, I would live it as I saw fit. Out of sight, out of mind and all that. I straightened out my hospital gown and left the bathroom. A few new additions were standing before my bed. One, a man dressed in an all-black bat costume, Batman obviously, another in the iconic red, blue and yellow, Superman in the last, dressed in a red costume munching on a Snickers bar, The Flash. Real-life superheroes in the flesh, wonder what they'll open the conversation with. I didn't hear you flush. The flash joked and I chuckled. I've always liked his sense of humor. Not the timing though, given by the look Batman sent his way. The flash looked away and said. Wow. I love the decor. Superman snorted while Batman's glare intensified. I'm just going to wait outside. The fastest man left the room in the blink of an eye. Batman leveled his gaze back at me. We need to talk. He pulled up a chair towards the small table near the bed and placed a laptop on top of it. A logo of Wayne Tech appeared on the screen and I swallowed a snort. Bruce then clicked on a video on the screen and my eyes bulged out of their sockets. What? That's you. I felt like shouting at him, I can see that but chose to focus on the screen instead. I was floating in mid-air, a bubble of air surrounding me, rings of fire, earth and water enclosed the bubble. The four elements. The avatar state. I watched as I demolished the warehouse from before with a wave of my hand. Concrete broke free from the pavement and pelted the men running away in panic. A huge rock smashed a man into pulp and I felt like vomiting after seeing the blood pool on the ground. I snarled and flames chased after a few men and burned them to a crisp. The camera evaded a huge rock and changed position. The last take they had of me before the footage ended was a black figure jumping in to stop me. I had a hand on my mouth as I looked at Batman. I, I don't remember any of that. That doesn't change the fact that you took the lives of three people and injured six others. Including Robin. It was like a gut punch once he delivered the last line. Robin was hurt? God, is he all right? I swear I never meant for any of that to happen. Superman placed a hand on Batman's shoulder, cutting off whatever he wanted to say next. He grinded his teeth and placed a bag on top of the bed. Inside there's a change of clothes. 
get cleaned up and Superman here will walk you to the cafeteria to get something to eat. After that, we will continue this conversation. Saying that, Batman turned around and walked off. Superman sighed as the door closed and patted me on the shoulder. Don't worry about him. He's just been very worried about Robin. I shook my head, still feeling awful. No, I understand. It's just that. Superman sat on the table as I trailed off. He's like that with everybody so don't let it get you down kid. It's Aiden. Aiden Strong. Superman smiled widely. Cool name. I'm Superman. We shared a laugh and slowly, I calmed down. I was loath to bring it up once more but it needed to be said. I really don't remember doing any of that. He nodded understandingly. When I got my powers, I almost hurt the people I care about. So I know what you must be feeling. What's done is done and you can only move forward and make up for your past actions by doing something meaningful with your new powers. No one blames you for what happened Aiden so don't blame yourself. There's nothing as bad as holding on to guilt. It eats you from the inside. He got off from the table and smiled that million dollar smile again. Now then, how about you get cleaned up and I'll introduce you to the rest of the league. Chapter 3, The Avatar System Aiden's Point of View Superman led us through a few long hallways and I got to see the layout of the watchtower. I couldn't believe it. I was in space, staring down at the cradle of human civilization. Planet Earth was. Beautiful right? I nodded in agreement with Superman. She is. It never gets old you know. He said. It's a sight that always leaves me amazed. Come. You'll get other chances to watch the Earth soon. The watchtower is not going anywhere. I followed him closely behind. The wonderful sight I just witnessed changed my perspective on things. On the walk to the cafeteria, I was already giddy at the prospects of what I could achieve. I was in a fictional world for God's sakes. That meant, I wasn't restricted by the mundane anymore. I could, I could be a hero. No, that's too shallow a goal, I could be the greatest hero in the world. Many would kill to be in my shoes. So no more whining, no more crying, no more doubting myself. It was with a new resolve that we finally made it to the cafeteria. The place was huge and almost deserted. Almost, because of the scarlet speedster munching on cupcakes and a silver-colored man with a red star on his chest reading the newspaper. Soups. There you are. Batman said to tell you about the meeting. I was supposed to come get you but... Flash gestured to the cupcakes. I got a bit distracted. Superman smiled and nodded at the other man present. Captain. Hello Superman. So this our current guest? Superman lightly pushed me forward. Aiden meet Captain Adam. Captain this is Aiden Strong. I reached out a hand to shake his hand and my palm disappeared in his huge one. Strangely his skin didn't feel as cold as it looked. Nice to meet you son. His voice was strong and I remembered he used to be in the army once. I nodded but before I could say anything else, the flash whooshed in. Hey there. We already met but I didn't introduce myself. I'm Flash, you know, the fastest man alive. I blinked. Ah uh, yeah. I'm Aiden Strong. The most confused guy alive, I guess. I added lamely, not expecting the laughter from Flash. Even Superman chuckled. I looked at them strangely. Was the bar set for jokes this low in this world or are they just fans of dad jokes? Superman patted me on the shoulder. Get something to eat, we'll talk some more after I'm done with the meeting. I nodded and they all turned to leave. Flash waved at me lazily and I smiled at his antics. I went over to the counter and marveled at the automatic setup of the cafeteria. The league didn't have a live-in chef but after biting into the burger, I was ready to pledge my undying loyalty to the one who had made the food. My plate cleared out quickly and I finally had some time to think about the message I had gotten. It was time to check the avatar system. 
menu. Instantly, a screen appeared in my vision. The avatar system. Bending styles, air, unlocked. Fire, locked. Earth, locked. Water, locked. Perks, adaptable body. There was a plus sign on each of the major elements. I pressed on it and for each element a section opened up. Air mastery level, beginner. Sub-element 1, locked. Sub-element 2, locked. Fire mastery level, locked. Sub-element 1, locked. Sub-element 2, locked. Earth mastery level, locked. Sub-element 1, locked. Sub-element 2, locked. Sub-element 3, locked. Water mastery level, locked. Sub-element 1, locked. Sub-element 2, locked. Sub-element 3, locked. Note, to unlock more bending styles, get the current bending style to master level. To do that, unlock the sub, elements of each element. I nodded in understanding. The outline of the whole screen was very straightforward. All I had to do to get access to fire bending was master wind bending. But what about the avatar state? How did I achieve it if I didn't have past lives? And what were the conditions to use it? I would have appreciated some answers but whoever had brought me here had most likely forgotten about me. In the grand scale of things, I doubt powerful beings would watch me as entertainment. Which meant, I would have to figure most of this out by myself. Oh goody. Next I clicked on the adaptable body perk and a bunch of information appeared. Adaptable body Your body is susceptible to different exotic stimuli. As a result, it grows to adapt to different things without any drastic change of form. Okay, that's good. So if I burn myself with fire many times, as long as I heal I'll eventually develop resistance to it. What an overpowered ability. Too bad, I don't have regeneration as a perk. Those two would pair well. Slow exposure would be the way to go then. The good thing is that I could grow stronger, faster and more durable in the long run as my body adapted to heavy weights. Something else was bugging me, exotic stimuli huh? My head perked up. It had been long since I'd watched the show but wasn't there a strength serum or two? Venom? No that's Bane's neosteroid strength enhancer. Of course, the blockbuster formula. It came with some adverse physical deformities but adaptable body would get rid of that for me. But if I want the very best, I think I should skip on the blockbuster serum. There was an even stronger variant that was a fusion of the blockbuster formula and venom. It was permanent. Luckily it was one of the highlights of the show so I remembered quite a fair bit about it. The other details were fuzzy however. So I now have a clear direction I can take. The question remaining is what is the Justice League going to decide to do with me? And do they have Pepsi on this world? General point of view. Batman was standing at the lower end of a U-shaped table. On his left side was Superman and on the right sat Captain Marvel. He clicked the remote and a projector placed in the open space between the two columns of the table lit up. A hologram of a young black kid appeared. This is the subject of today's matter. His name is Aiden Strong. He was on the scene during a fight with Penguin's men and Robin. I won't go into the details of the operation but while I chased after Killer Croc, this happened. He clicked on the console and the footage from before started playing. Once it was done, different expressions appeared on all of them. Most were surprised at the power displayed by the young boy. He seems to have control over the four basic elements. Wind, fire, earth, and water. It's my belief that although he displayed complex manipulation of said elements, he wasn't aware of himself at that moment. I had to use knockout gas in high quantities to take him down, showing that he also has a resilient physique. Batman continued. There's one problem however. He doesn't exist in any records or databases. No facial recognition has picked up on his face before. He's a ghost. Normally there would be traces left of a data wipe but nothing this clean. There was concern etched on the faces of most of the Justice League. 
What's your take on that Batman? Green Arrow spoke up. Batman grunted and pressed another key on the console, leading to the hologram shifting to an image of a dozen Earths side by side. I believe that he is from an alternate Earth. There was a collective murmur of disbelief. Batman continued on regardless. Such a theory would need more looking into and input directly from the source. Superman shook his mind. That's a huge leap. Even for you, Batman. So more Earths exist? Captain Marvel wondered in excitement. Yeah. I've met a few people from alternate dimensions and traveled to others too but still bats, I agree with Superman, it's a huge leap in logic. The flash supplied from the side. You know, we could just ask him. I doubt we can expect anything but the truth with a telepath and Wonder Woman's lasso of truth. Hal offered a suggestion. It was popular enough that most of the others nodded. Batman acquiesced to the majority's view. All right. Moving on, there's the matter of what to do with him. He's responsible for three deaths and even more injuries. The mood turned grim. The League has never condoned killing but I think we can rule this as an act of self-defense. Surprisingly, Batman was the one to defend Aiden's actions. Superman looked at him, surprised. An expression that was shared by all the rest. They knew that Robin had gotten injured, a cracked rib and a dislocated shoulder from an unavoidable hit from a stray rock. Superman looked proud of his closest friend. That's incredibly understanding of you. Usually you're all like, I am Batman. Flash joked, changing his voice to an intimidating grunt at the end. There was a few chuckles as Batman stared down at the Flash. Somehow this seemed like a usual occurrence. Moving. On. His abilities seemed to draw themselves out when he was already hurt, evidenced by the blood stains on his clothes. That would suggest that they are something new to him. It's paramount that whatever we decide here, takes into consideration the training of his abilities to avoid outbursts like before. I could take him in. Maybe having someone who shares the same roots and culture as a mentor would help him acclimate better to a different world. John, one of the two Green Lanterns around said. Batman nodded. That won't work John. It would be appropriate if it wasn't for your off-world duties. Hal's words to his fellow Green Lantern made him sigh. Themyscira is out for obvious reasons but so is the rest of the League for other various things. My suggestion is we let Red Tornado oversee his training. His power set is elemental manipulation and that would go a long way when paired with Tornado's experience. Green Arrow rounded up to look at the Dark Knight. You're suggesting we make him a part of the Black Ops team in the works? Yes but as a probationary member up until he gains complete control of his abilities or we decide otherwise. Nunn refuted Batman's words and after discussing more issues regarding League business, the meeting was concluded. Chapter 4, Starting with the Basics Aiden's Point of View I still don't get why we had to leave the Watchtower for this. Red Tornado ignored my complaints and floated towards the training room. So far we had passed by the kitchen, meeting hall, the showers and personal rooms. The watchtower is for league members and associates only. Your previous stay was due to the unique circumstances. He finally decided to answer. I rolled my eyes. So after you guys finished interrogating me you decided to kick me out of the Underos Club? I feel used. Negative. The Batman suggested, bringing you down to Earth would help you get used to a new planet by spending time with other people. Preferably, your age mates. He probably meant the sidekicks. Problem was I hadn't even met one except for Robin and that didn't count because I was screaming my ass off during our first meeting. Oh and I was also responsible for his injuries so. That aside. The interrogation had been, surprisingly tame compared to what I had been expecting of Batman. They already knew or guessed I was from another world, so I just rolled with the information they already had and told them about the League from my version of the Earth being relatively newer as compared to here. They had me write down some of the things I could remember about their alternate selves and I wrote general stuff that a normal civilian would know. 
There was the threat of being found out about the information I had by the Martian manhunter, so I had projected my reasons for lying to him. Hello, John, I'd begun. By the subtle widening of his eyes while standing behind Batman, I knew he'd heard me. Meanwhile, my hand hadn't stalled for a single second during that time. Writing down some of the villains I knew they had faced already. I don't know if you've read my mind or not but this world is based on a comic book in my world, so I guess you understand why I couldn't share that information with the whole collective. I know it's your duty as a Justice League member to inform the others but I fear that such a delicate, issue would be better handled with discretion. I could feel his shock ripple through the link he had made with my mind. I urge you to only share this with Batman. I'll answer any questions you have after you've taken my opinion into account and come to a logical conclusion. Luckily, John had acted like nothing had happened and after a while I was done. There were inconsistencies that Batman picked up on and combined with what I had told John, I could expect to see the Dark Knight soon. The truth is, I was doing this for my own safety as well. I would rather Batman, Mr. Suspicion Incarnate know this early on rather than finding out about it due to his detective skills. Giving him the chance to decide whether to tell the rest of the League would keep the responsibility off my shoulders and I could focus fully on training my powers. The easy part was that I could guess what he would decide. Probably something along the lines of asking me to tell him everything and then file it away and start countermeasures on any future threats. That would guarantee me a level of trust from him as well as a healthy suspicion on my true intentions. A good balance. He would keep me close and offer the best training for me that the League could offer because of the value of what I knew and the power I possessed. I hated using what I knew of his personality to plan around him and the others, but, I couldn't afford to half-ass this. In fact, building my own mental shields was paramount. Apart from John Johns, his niece Miss Martian and Simon could read my mind. I could take advantage of my adaptive physiology and have Miss Martian regularly intrude into my mind. Adapting to those intrusions, I can then build my mental shields up stronger. It would take a lot of time, but with patience, my mind would become an impenetrable fortress. We reached the training room and passed it. Wait, I thought we were going to test out my powers? I asked, confused. We are. The android said in that same blank tone I had already gotten used to. I looked back at the door we were leaving behind. We were never meant to do it in the training room were we? I swear I caught a hint of amusement from Tornado as he replied. Number. That was just your assumption. So, where are we going exactly? The beach. The open area will be suitable and prevent damage to any equipment in case things get out of hand. Annoyance showed itself on my face. Is that what the League thinks is gonna happen? That I'm going to go all rage god again? He didn't answer and floated silently as before, leaving me to my thoughts. It was when we appeared behind the mountain complex that I came to the obvious conclusion I had missed entirely. I snapped my fingers in realization. You were giving me a tour of the place. That's why we didn't come here directly. Red Tornado didn't have any expression on his face but the smug was rolling off him in waves. You finally caught on. Good. You'll be responsible for giving the tour to your peers once they arrive. This is meant to be your base of operation. I nodded. Batman had also informed me of the team being put together. They were supposed to be brought here in a week. Robin will probably have already healed by then. The League's medical expertise was pretty good. Break a bone? Green Lantern lines up the broken bone in surgical precision. Wayne Industries and LexCorp had also made huge strides in the medical practice that my normal Earth wouldn't see for the next 20 years. Red Tornado floated to a small distance away from me and stopped. A gentle wave lapped onto the shore as a slow breeze blew through my clothes. I was dressed in a red t-shirt and black shorts. Knowing what the business was for today, my shoes and socks were put away and I settled into an airbender stance similar to Ba Gua Zhang. The style emphasized the concept of flow. Maneuvering around objects to avoid direct confrontation while still controlling the motion of the fight. Being free like the air. 
All this was supplied by my innate airbending powers. I didn't have a teacher to teach me the forms but that was the good thing about airbending, it was freeing. Let's begin with a demonstration of what you can do. I nodded at Red Tornado and breathed in and out. I sank into the breeze blowing slightly and tried to beckon it. The breeze escaped my grasp and I reduced my aggressiveness. It wasn't about control, it was about manipulation. My left leg stepped back in a circular motion, followed closely by my left hand. The sand on the beach picked up as a breeze followed behind my actions. The air ruffled my t-shirt as I completed my twirl in a complete 360 degrees. My right hand picked up the breeze and the palm exploded out in a swift action. The breeze turned to a torrential wave of wind that sent sand and dust flying away in front of me. Wow! I muttered in fascination as the aggression in the wind petered out to nothing. Leaving behind the soft breeze from before. You seem to have basic understanding of wind manipulation. You can't force it to do your bidding. Its very nature opposes that. Now let's try a spar. Red Tornado was an android of few words so I nodded and breathed in, watching him intently. I wasn't sure but I think that he was an air elemental. There was no way I could beat him in that. But I didn't need to beat him. I just needed to learn and get better. I waved my hand a blast of air fanned out towards him. The wind was nullified into nothing before it could even get close. The dust and sand picked up by the attack provided enough cover for me to sprint towards him. I got within range and jumped, I manipulated the air to give me a push and I found myself five meters above him. My leg lashed out in an air slash but he calmly floated away from the attack. My arm then shot off to the side and pushed my body away on the air, bringing me closer to Tornado. Tornado's hand came up and a swirling mass of red wind hit my body, throwing me back. Oof. I used the air to slow my descent but I still landed on the beach painfully. Do you know what you did wrong? He asked, floating calmly towards me. I was busy trying to breathe though, so he decided to answer. You left yourself open before a superior opponent. Fighting in the air is a different skill from doing it on land. It's an environment suited for those with free range of movement. Something you currently lack. To put it in human terms, you're not quite there yet, champ. It's official, Red Tornado can joke. I turned myself over and rose up to my knees while feeling dizzy. He was right. That move had been fancy but completely unnecessary. I looked back at him, my determination as strong as ever. Again. This marks the end of part, one of the story, Avatar in DC Universe. Thank you for listening. Please like the video and hit the subscribe button to listen more. Hit the bell icon to get notified of all the new content uploaded to the channel ASAP.